Now let us look at uh, an optimization on DPFM called Gloss Lab. So as we decide and propagate, we may construct a data structure to observe the run and avoid unnecessary backtracking. But currently what is happening is you execute your PLL and some point of time you hit a conflict and when you backtrack, you have to go to last decision and move on, right? This may not be a very optimal way of doing it. Soon we'll see an example why this mindless backtracking can be avoided and we can have a more optimal way of backtracking. Before that, let's uh, uh, look at a few phrases, terms and definitions. Okay, So uh, once we assign value to uh, variables and uh, do unit propagation, so on, then we call that a run of a DPLN. For example, here we will say P6 is assigned to 0, okay, and then P5 assigned to 0 and P7 assigned to 0. This is a run of a DPLN. During a run, we assign a decision level on every letter. So, for example, in this run, we can say that P5 was assigned false, so not P5 assigned to true at decision level 1 because after the decision 1 you be assigned to this. Similarly we can say the following P7 is assigned to 0 again which is that means not P becomes true after two decisions are made and in fact the P7 itself is decision so once you make a decision that decision counts in after which that variable is assigned. Similarly, we can say not P6 at 1. Now, an important concept of implication graph. In the implication graph, what you have, you have nodes N and edges E. What is N? Okay, first, uh, N has a set of true literals. The literals that have become true in the current assignment uh, that are in that node. And you have conflict node and if you have seen a conflict then you create a node a special node which you call, which we call conflict node now let's look at the edges what are the kind of edges we we create between two literals literal l1 and literal l2 there is an edge if l2 was created because of some unit propagation and l1 was a false in the clause so we annotate each node with a decision level. For example, if you have uh, L1 or L2 clause and the uh, not of L1 is set to true, then you have an edge with L2, right? And uh, you, you will have an edge between not of L1 to L2. And at some point of time, you have to say, okay, this is my decision level let's say k and decision level is remains the same because uh, uh, unit propagation does not add any new decisions so let's look at another example so we had this uh, formula in our past example we had this run which we did in previous video we reached to a conflict state now let's draw a, in an implication for this uh, for this uh, uh, run so first uh, so the, the implication graph is built as we assign values to variable or as literals begin become true so after making first decisions not of p6 becomes true that is correct that corresponds to this decision now so because of clause c8 i have to uh, set p5 to 0 so look at this clause okay uh, so p6 uh, this literal is false so this has to be made true therefore so not of p6 implies not of p5 okay so that's basically this is the edges being added you also add, uh, label the edge with the clause okay which is not part of formal definition but it helps us uh, this this labeling helps us now we made uh, another decision afterwards uh, we set uh, p7 to 0 so therefore not p7 becomes true and then now you have a decision level 2 okay. because you have a decision level 2 we label the literal with uh, 2 and uh, 
uh, now we try to do unit propagation there's no unit propagation here so well there's no, no node and at it level now we have one more decision made immediately afterward which is called p1 and we set p1 to 1 okay so let's uh, set p1 to 1 and now our decision level here is to 3 so now now we carry on now let us look at how p3 becomes 1 because of plus c2 and in c2 we have seen that uh, uh, this little becomes false and uh, what else uh, p5 becomes uh, not uh -huh, p5 becomes false okay so therefore this has to be made true so two nodes of my application graphs are causing another node to become true so we record that using these two edges okay and we as we write add a node p3 at decision level 3 and we carry on similarly we create add a node for p2 uh, because of clause c1 and carry on and then we say okay p4 assigned to be 1 because of clause 3 now because of clause 4 we have a conflict so we we assign and we have extra additional node conflict and which says okay this literal has become true and this literal has become true and clause 4 has both the literals and nothing else therefore uh, the, this is conflict so you add in conflict mode okay and connect with the with the literal that made this conflict happen so this object is called uh, implication both of these uh, objects which you're looking at is just different perspective on on the same information However, the implication graphs give you a little bit more understanding why and how things happen. So what is a conflict clause? We traverse the implication graph backwards to find the set of decisions that cause the conflict. Okay. The cause of negations of the causing decision is called conflict clause. A bit of a mouthful definition. One example uh, would make it completely clear what it is here is the our implication graph which we have built in previous slide uh, so look at the causing decisions so if from conflict uh, if you go backwards these two decision made the conflict this decision has no impact on the conflict therefore we will say not p6 and p1 are my causing decisions and we negate them uh, each one of them so if negate of not of p6 is p6 p negation of p1 is not of p1 and we take the disjunction this is my conflict clause first try to understand the mechanical part of it uh, first you take the conflict node traverse backwards reach to the leaves and uh, collect the decisions you get not, not of p6 p and p1 not every decision will be reachable back uh, from the conflict node then you flip the sign so not of p6 become p6 p1 becomes not of p1 and take their disjunction so this is called conflict clause so what is this conflict clause what it does F the few things you need to observe so what we can do the we can add this conflict clause in the input clauses so, so basically what you do you, you you have an implication graph you construct this conflict clause and add it back to an input set so after adding this conflict clause what do you do you you backtrack to the last conflicting decision let's suppose in, in a conflict clause th three literal showed up and wherever the last decision was there you just go to that point not the latest decision but to the last decision that appears in the conflict clause so what is the benefit of doing this yeah, this seems a very very strange process so let's look at uh, some properties of conflict clauses so one first thing to observe is that by adding conflict clause it does not change the set of satisfying assignment okay. second thing to observe is it implies that uh, conflicting partial assignment will never be tried again okay. this is these two facts together make a very important compelling reason why you should go and add this uh, clause uh, conflict clause in your set of input uh, clauses the multiple clauses can satisfy the above two conditions 
and what we can do is uh, we can define this properties can itself we use the definition so the first we gave a definition which is coming from the application graph but however this it's uh, and which implies this property and which we can later turn into def definition itself uh, it's, it's up to our choice okay and this def definition is more functional so first try to get an intuition why this this happens okay let's go back to our example <clears throat> in our example we had uh, uh, decisions made right not of p6 and p1 so con application graph is saying uh, if you have these two decisions okay with f i will definitely go to uh, false okay i will reach to conflict okay if you just move things around, okay, uh, you take a negation, put a negation out and move this here, you'll find this 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 thing is equivalent to uh, F implies negation of not of P6 and P1, okay, which by the way is my cl learn class. So formula implies my conflict classes. Okay? So that's uh, that states this this property. Now another property uh, which says that it this conflict clause blocks the same partial assignment ever again how does that happen now once you add this this clause as soon as, as you assign p6 to p0 the unit propagation force p1 to become 0 if you assign p1 to be 1 it force p6 to become one again so, so the, the combination right the combination when the p6 was uh, zero and the p1 was one will never be tried again if once you add this clause in your input set of clauses so therefore the, these two properties allow you to not to change the set of assignments by adding an additional clause and this clause explicates the reasoning of your system of your constraints where it says okay if you make these these decisions the 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 conflict is going to happen for sure so what is the benefit of uh, adding conflict clause it brings away the search space right so uh, you are not flipping every decision you made you are flipping only those decisions that are relevant to the conflict okay and record the past work of sad solver it's a very important idea it means that uh, once you do a run and what you learn from the run when you run fails and it teaches to a conflict you you need to learn from your failures and this re conflict clause records the the lessons learned from a conflict and there are further more uh, optimizations that get enabled because of this uh, we will see them shortly so after adding this extra heuristics, it was observed that the search solve will become really fast. And some people say that uh, now we should change the name of the algorithm. Instead of calling DPLL, we should call it CDC, Conflict Driven Clause 